Hey, hi everybody. Welcome to another Q&A for the 25th annual San Francisco Independent Film Festival 2023. Thank you for joining us. We are very lucky, fortunate to have the filmmakers uh, for Murmur here with us. Hey guys. Hey. hey. How's hey. it going? Oh. Thank, you. Thank, you for, thank you for having us. You're welcome. Appreciate hey, uh, yeah. why don't we just have you guys introduce yourself instead of me doing it. And Mark, since you're first up on my okay. screen, please tell me who cool. you are, the answers and your role uh, and whatnot. Uh, Mark Polish, I directed, wrote it and uh, produced the feature, Murmur. Thank you. Cyrus, you're next on my screen. Uh, hello, my name is uh, Cyrus Arnold and I play Angel. Welcome. Carl, you want to go next? Yeah, I'm uh, Carl Hine. I was the lead VFX artist as well as an editor and producer. And I think there's one more guy with this, but I don't see him on my screen. Yeah, uh, I'm Danny Davila, and I was a producer or am a producer and uh, production designer on Murmur. Right on. And where are you cool. guys calling in from? Danny, where are you calling in from? I'm calling in from Atlanta, Georgia. Okay, how come we don't see you? <laughs> Because he's hiding. He's in a car driving. He's probably. in a car. I thought it's, I heard He's probably that. working. Knowing um, Danny, he's probably working. <laughs> he's so. in a car. And yeah. uh, Mark, where are you calling from? I'm calling from uh, New York, upstate. Got it. And Cyrus? Uh, Burbank, California. Cool. And Carl, where are you at? Columbus, Ohio. All right. Welcome, guys. Uh, hello Thank from you. San Francisco. So let's start with the basic obvious question. Maybe how did this project come to be? Mark, how did it all start? Uh, it started a few years ago. Um, I think I have a daughter, obviously, who plays the one of the parts in the movie. Um, and we had discussed, uh, I, I, you know, growing up with her and seeing her relationship with uh, social media, especially the iPhone or smartphones at this fact, seeing that relationship, seeing the idea that the kind of the first kind of birth of the idea was, wow, these are kind of like a black box to your life. It records everything. Um, pictures, family, and, 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 and it's, you know, the, the smartphone also is less of a phone now. It's more of like almost like a PC. But I thought, well, if we're ever to lose her or you lose anybody in your family, how you could piece a story together if you found that phone. Mm -hmm. how, we, how we make moments out of non-moments, not only birthday parties anymore, that kind of where we used to define where we'd film really defining moments. The phone picks up everything and the mundane moments were kind of more interesting to me and how these kids are just filming everything yeah and so that's yeah. kind of the impetus of the story and then i thought well how what genre would it fit or what genre could i tell or talk about the things that i really want to talk about and i felt like the horror kind of thriller genre kind of really opened that door for me to talk about not only my child in this world that's been fractured with you know with augmented reality and phone but it allows me to talk about in general where everybody can kind of understand how powerful these phones are yeah how powerful yeah. we how much we have in our pocket you know uh, before so. i watched your film of course i read the log line and i read your director statement and uh yeah. I, I couldn't wait to dive into your movie oh yeah uh, uh, uh you know one thing i remember too um the and your the direct statement something like you may want to kill your phone or it may yeah kill you or something like that <laughs> yeah i mean the kind of the ultimate statement is that when you watch the movie maybe when you walk out you kind of look at your phone differently maybe you want yeah. to smash it or something but obviously they won't but it was it was, it was a great kind of tagline to like you know we start questioning what we're carrying around all the time so uh, it's, yeah uh, it's, it's a pretty fascinating piece of machinery we carry so, I guess they also yeah. said there's as much power in the phone now or more than what they used to get to the moon the first time. So I've heard. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I think it's tremendous what this thing does. And look, it really, it's like anything. It comes with the good and the bad. It's it's great in the sense it's, it can, you know, there's a revolution behind it. But then obviously it's detrimental at the same time. Yeah. So. And uh, not to keep talking about the phone, but yeah. it's kind of a theme. Uh, and it's also, don't you think it's detrimental to uh, movie going? Maybe? Um, it can be. I think, look, I think a lot of people, you know, are, are you know, absorbing content on their phone. Um, it, it's good and bad. I think, you know, there's just, you know, formats change all the time. It's, you, get, you know, I mean, we filmed it on the iPhone, which gave us a lot of flexibility. Um, I didn't want to make an iPhone movie just for the state of, hey, we shot on the iPhone. I, de I definitely wanted context behind it and, and understand that, hey, these kids, they filmed it themselves basically we had uh, 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 like seven or eight different cinematographers at one point 
which is so kind of crazy. There was you know? all yeah. iPhone. There was no one. Yes. Like, I saw the, you know, there was the a, there was a percentage of uh, red, and there was a percentage of um, what was the camera we used, Danny? I can always forget it. The Pentax, right? Uh, um, yeah, it was the Lumix, the GH5. A Lumix, yeah. So yeah. there was there was one camera that one of the characters carried around that kind of stabilized everything, but everything. I would say the majority, I would say 80% of it, at least 85% of it was all iPhone shot with the kids, you know, wow. shot by the kids. So. Uh, so I'm getting many questions, but yeah. How, yeah. how about the other people here? How'd you guys get involved? Carl, I see you on my screen now. How'd you come to the project? So um, I was actually brought on originally just to do a couple visual effects shots, uh, <laughs> just, just like but, any, yeah. just like any yeah. other artist. you know what I mean? Um, yeah. And uh, I really, found myself gravitating towards the story and wanting to know more about this kind of project. So, you know, bugging Mark, like, well, you know, what is this, you know, cause as a VFX artist, you just get your shots and very little context around it. But um, I felt like I, you know, to understand what was going on with these shots, I needed to know the context. And so we just started diving in more and more. I started taking on more shots and um, yeah. So eventually it just worked out that I was kind of leading all the visual effects kind of, I had all the ideas in my head that Mark and I had talked about and kind of the concepts for what this game was going to be and, and how it works and, and how we see the kids playing the game. That was something uh, that was a lot of discussions early on. So, did, did so yeah. You have, did you have more challenging work than normal since a lot of iPhone footage or multiple media footage? Yeah. I, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. I think, I think, um, yeah, when you don't have a really great camera with beautiful sensor and, you know, great lenses and, you know, you gotta, the, the, the talent is, you know, moving the camera around in a way that's probably not conducive to tracking. Yeah, there were a lot of challenges uh, that came up that you don't normally get with like a, a VFX shot, you know. Um, but I think what saved us was the idea of it being an app and in augmented reality. And, you know, when you use Instagram filters, things aren't quite perfect. Things jitter or things kind of lag behind or they don't quite mm -hmm. stick to the the tracking as perfectly as you know you would want it to be say if it were really like in the world you know we want to see it like in the world so i think that kind of saved us a little bit because we were able to be a little bit looser with the tracking and and be a little bit more conceptual with what we wanted to get in there and it lent itself it, it, to the story yeah yeah exactly. it did it, it, what i liked about it and you know with carl and stuff was this freedom that, you know, the mistakes become your style or the idea that, you know, things drifted, you know, because they weren't sticking or, or they weren't anchoring to the to the picture, but it it allowed this collage style that the kids that I feel that I see with, you know, with Cyrus and all these, there's they're very sticker oriented. There's a lot of different types of stuff you see on social media. So it allowed to create this collage style that I think really represents this generation. Where they're kind of pulling all these different types of imagery and putting them together. There's not just, you know, you can see the '70s and they look like the '70s. This generation has filters that make things look like the '20s. Things that make things black yeah. and white. This is going to be a very difficult time to decipher what year it is. Mm -hmm. You know, the last 10, 10, 15 years, unlike very defining decades. And I wanted to represent that kind of as well. Yeah, so. you did. You did really well. Yeah. I want to mm -hmm. talk about that in a little bit. But since mm -hmm. Ron kind of like yeah. cinematography, yeah. well, yeah. did the actors actually do some of their own shooting? Because I mean, you I talked to Angel sensation. or Cyrus. Cyrus was having a good time. When you... I mean, I could I could yeah. still see yeah. in my memory of yeah. you know uh, Cyrus or some of the other actors like yeah. having those angles while they're running with the, yeah. the mm -hmm. phone. Mm -hmm. Was that you shooting? Yeah. yeah. Um. That was partially. Um, there was a lot of magic uh, involved in uh, in filming uh, the scenes of Murmur. Um, our wonderful cinematographer Rob uh, would sometimes uh, be really close and would be framing a shot so that it kind of really felt like coordinated and exact. If there was something in particular that needed to be um, captured, like a bear trap or something, but most most of the time. Yeah, like a, most of the time, it was me uh, with like with these crazy angles looking down at me and, and, and you see my facial expressions and stuff and it looks like so off kilter and weird and kind of hilarious. 
Um, and that's one of my favorite parts about Murmur is that um, a lot of the uh, moments that are captured in the movie are like usually unintentional of like an actor like a, a dropping a camera to a weird angle and they're just kind of talking and you kind of feel like oh like um, what's going on like there's an overarching like sinister funny weirdness going on yeah. with how weird some of the angles look yeah. and 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 uh, and I can't say that I was like subconsciously like oh this is going to be so so Kubrickian <laughs> if we like drop bomb eating these Cheetos, but also it, it did have like that really cool vibe. So yeah, it definitely uh, was all of us uh, shooting it. Was it, was it deliberate direction to a lot of times or was it just like, Mark, how did you handle like yeah. those kind of chaotic cell phone? Yeah. Shots? You know, look, I, I, I love the chaos and it was going to be controlled to some, to some degree, but I loved having actors and their extension of their characters and they got to choose what they thought were the strongest points of what it was. And it felt like, you know, to represent this generation properly was not for me to get involved was to me to be like, Hey, you know, this is what I love about what you guys do. They would, they had the control to either, you know, shoot it forward, you know, face out facing or front to them. And so you could see who was very comfortable with that, you know, like, Tiger, not so much as were Kenzie or Angel. They could swap back and forth. So I liked that kind of ping ponging back and forth of these kids that are so natural to get on to to um, shoot themselves, which is my generation's not so much. You know, they they. So I I like that the kind of the direction I would would give them was very very minimal. They were all very close to their characters to some degree. Mm -hmm. You know, I would let them go off. And then we look, it was very challenging because we didn't have dailies. We didn't have monitors. I kind of trusted all that kind of, hey, wow. I think we're going to get, we're going to get you know, kind of idea. It's the Redwoods. We didn't have generators. We didn't have a lot of things that you would usually have on a, on a movie set. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it was right up the street from you guys. So it's like yeah, Occidental, yeah. Santa Rosa. And so it was a pandemic. We didn't have a lot of options to have the kind of support you'd usually have to monitor performances and so we kind of were hoping you know danny was there um and danny can chime in on how kind of yeah, sometimes danny, it was frustrating i can't see you sometimes so i don't yeah. know to ask you a question it was, I think, it was frustrating I, go ahead danny yeah i think it's also important to point out which is you know cyrus touched on it a little bit and i think this was a very intentional thing that mark did in the edit and it's something that between mark and and Carl and other helpers that Mark had along the way editing um, that we had a couple editors fail at at the beginning mm -hmm. because the nature of the film was uh, not necessarily the traditional coverage, right? So the intention mm -hmm. was like, hey, get the lines, get the you know the the whole point of of all this footage that we that we had. We had we did, we collected so much data. Right. Mm -hmm. Like everybody was filming all at the same time. We were taking the cameras back, like taking the phones back as if they were, you know, being reloaded like traditional cameras, but they were the phones. Mm -hmm. So we're replacing somebody's phone in their hand with another phone to, to shoot more while we're taking a phone back and, and collecting that data. And at the end of the day, it took a long time to sift through all this data and all this footage and really, you know, piece together sort of like the story is saying that the police are doing right so um but we had a couple editors fail at it because they wanted to find like the perfect shot and they're like well we can't do that and mark said well what about this shot you know like the, it's great that it's just hanging out you know at that person's hip right it's organic it's real yeah the editors um, had to be a little bit more looser and uh mm -hmm. less restrained if you will yeah and, and i mean it, yeah go ahead Dan. go ahead mark yeah, I mean, the thing, the idea was to, you know, there's a docu style to it. You know, there's a documentary style that I felt like I just really wanted to capture kids in this environment, how they really act, how they really portray themselves, what they really do, and not really interfere with that. Right. Because organically, you know, and so Good, they're you? not going to, yeah, they're not going to cover themselves that way. They're just not right. going to. And I figured if you have seven, cameras firing off it when full cast five with the main cast, you're going to get really great stuff. You just going to have to abandon and surrender to this kind of, kind of avant-garde, 
French new wave style, which is like, we're going to get some really cool jams. We may miss a few things here and there, but yeah. for the most part, you know, some of the, I mean, even Carl, some of the lines off screen were just fantastic. And we yeah. just kept them because it was like, you'd usually go home, we need to cover that line. But it was, it was great to hear. It, it just became a different movie in yeah. that way. Yeah. You know? I you enjoyed know. it. I mean, I'm used to yeah. like this, uh, you know, the, 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 the tools at our fingertips now. So mm -hmm. uh, maybe for some audiences, it might be too, um, you know, uh, energetic, kinetic. But, yeah, for sure. But I think, I think that to... that takes people cause they're not expecting that, you know, they're expecting yeah. to go in and it's like shot, 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 you know, and with this, like, you know, like everybody was saying, we had upwards of seven cameras running at any given moment. So in the edit, you know, the freedom was there to do that. And, and it, we felt like we needed to do that to, to give the, the film, the energy that we were looking for, you know, if we had shot this mm -hmm. whole thing on seven iPhones, but then it was like, you know, over the shoulder, over the shoulder, you know what I mean? Like keep the 180 rule and all that, all those traditional filmmaking things, it would have, it would have lost yeah. something, you know what I mean? It would, yeah, mm -hmm. it would have just, it wouldn't have felt like what we were going for. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Mark, you also, mm -hmm. I mean, it's almost experimental. It is very, it's, you know, the t yeah, the term, I, I don't have a very good relationship with the term experimental. Me either. Because me either. It always feel, no, it, no, but because it makes it feel like you weren't, um, in a sense, planned. It wasn't planned, you know, like, like you're right. experimenting. Right. It was as planned as we could, me and Danny could get on foot. I mean, we, we, we yeah. really kind of try to understand the language of the, of the cameras, what their limitations were. But yeah, in the sense of could it fail, he, could have failed yeah we could have failed pretty big i mean it could have we could have really yeah, evil and, and evil I have, this thing, i'm not an experimental know? filmmaker yeah. but i did yeah. i did appreciate you know your like there was thought behind the shot choices of like the found footage if it's found yeah footage, or yeah. music all that stuff yeah 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 no i mean look yeah i think it, there's an experimental nature to it i think all film has it it just sometimes when people use that terminology it gets to the point where you right. think it's almost like improv like improv like a lot of people think the kids were improv and a lot of it was you can talk to cyrus about this i mean there was a uh, there was a script that they went by and then they kind of just branched off of it and then we used a lot of kind of what they used but if you didn't have a script we we would have we would have got this thing in a ditch much quicker right right so, yeah you know that's a great segue because mm -hmm. uh the performances are wonderful cyrus mm -hmm. you and your uh ensemble cast i mean mm -hmm. You guys are totally believable, natural. Um, uh, I love watching you. You also yeah. irritated me as more of a, a Mark generation guy, you know, as a parent. Yeah. Um, so well yeah. done. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Uh, how yeah. how was how how was your approach to to and how was Mark directing you and working with your other castmates? Um, well, okay. So first of all, working with the other castmates was great. We all got along very quickly. Um, we all gelled very well, very quickly, very easily. Um, I, I loved working with Mark. I loved his direction because, um, I feel like there was this really neat strategy of, um, do one that is like, uh extremely faithful to the sides in the script because there was a script it wasn't like everybody just going off the cuff and off the rails um there was definitely like a structure that we all like there was a, there were fundamentals that we all built off of and then there was always an opportunity for um a take where i could just kind of like go a little crazy with it yeah and um and uh and it all was like it all felt very congruent with each other because obviously the way we were filming it uh, in the first place felt very organic to what we were doing um so mark's direction was very um like yes this is the script and yes and this is what we're going to capture and this is the story that we're going to tell um but also you are this character so whatever liberties you feel and whatever like choices you want to make feel free to do so yeah. um and uh, it was it was definitely lots of fun to do. Um, it, it's it, it must be like crazy looking at all of the footage that isn't in the movie too, um, because <laughs> there were so many uh, ways that the scene went, and it, it just felt uh, really great. And I think it actually added to the chemistry between everyone because usually when you're doing these scenes with groups of people, it's easy to feel like 
kind of um, forgotten or in the curtain um, when you don't have a, a, a line to place or something. But with this one, um, everybody just gelling off of each other and riffing off of each other while sticking to the script at the same time um, really gave everybody room to breathe and gave every uh, everyone a, a great chance to shine. Um, and so that's one of the uh, things I'm really grateful about um, regarding Mark's direction. Yeah, it, it was impressive. Your performances yeah. were impressive. I, I even yeah. did a mental note to myself. Are they just riffing? Or yeah, it's funny. Is there, is there a script? Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the funny thing is, is that they, you know, we've gotten some, you know, different uh, people say, and, and, you know, well, the kids are irritating. And like, both things are true. It's like, you're not supposed to, you know, there's a, it's funny, the younger generation love them. An older generation kind of is like, well, these kids are going to get themselves in trouble. And both are true in the sense that, Look, we, we raised this generation. This generation is a cause and effect, you know? And so if you don't like them, that's just as much as great as if you do like them, you know, to me, it's like, yeah. it's, a, it's, it's, it's the same thing. So. Yeah. And also I want to add on to uh, this uh, point about um, the cash gelling and, and uh, Mark's direction, which is like the great thing about found footage is like, you could be in the middle of a scene and someone would like, kind of like break out into like a Harlem dance and in a, in a classic structural format of a movie that wouldn't work at all. And it would be weird and people would just be confused, but the organic and natural feel of an iPhone, it just kind of feels natural. Like there's a, in the middle of a scene, um, I say something like, uh, we find teeth in bark, which is such a creepy image yeah. um, at one point in the movie. And I say something like, um, dude, one time, like I went to the dentist and he, and I, and he said he wasn't going to give me any shots, but he lied to me. He gave me a ton of, ton of shots. He gave me a shot. And, yeah. Like, yeah. And, and that's a true story. Uh -huh. But the thing is, in an, in a normal movie, what like you're watching this regular um, experience yeah. of a movie or a studio movie and you're like, why did he say that? Like, can you, can, can we cut away from this? But with the natural feel of an iPhone and someone being recorded saying that it feels so natural, um, yeah. especially for Angel uh, to say that in the scene. So you can kind of really get away with um, some things that you yeah. would not do. I agree. Well, that's not yeah. Good job keeping that line in, Mark. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, there's a, bunch of, there's a bunch of good little gems like that throughout that that even watching it, because, you know, I, as a director, I don't have a monitor. My headset for the ears were going in and out, mostly not working. Um, and so when I'm watching it, you know, going back, I'm going, holy crap, some really, really funny things. Cause the kids were really riffing off each other. There was some of these kind of jokes in there that are so next level about, I, I don't know if you picked it, if people picked uh -huh. up, Carl picked it up about, the Game of Thrones, and they're saying, they're saying, oh, this is like the Game of Thrones. And then Tiger comes in and is like, yeah, but there's no Starbucks cup in this shit. And I was like, <laughs> that is, yeah. it's, the fun, it's like, if you know what she's talking about, it's super funny. It, it, but it's, it's multi-level. It's just random. It, it, yeah. yeah. It's just so random that it, that these kids were getting it. Yeah. And it, there's. And, and delivering it naturally. I mean, like. It yeah, came, yeah. It, yeah. it didn't look so, like they memorized the script, you know? Yeah, um, I love that. I love that kind of kind of branching out of yeah. dialogue that stayed within the parameters of who they were. Rarely yeah. did, I mean, I don't think there was anything that we couldn't use just because of time. I, Carl, you could yeah. go off on that. There was, everything was usually was usable at a certain yeah. point. Yeah, um, we, we love did, that yeah. about the movie here at SFN yeah. too. Uh, yeah. Carl, did you say you were the part, you were an editor as well? Yeah. yeah, I ended up uh, yeah, editing me for that. the so, final yeah, cut. Yeah, yeah. Just, speak to that. Speak to that. I mean, it seems like, yeah. on one hand, overwhelming with this approach, and then on mm. the other hand, a little bit more freedom, if you will. Yeah, I think, I think the freedom came from just being able to cut to different angles, and you know, to Cyrus's point, if it was down next to his waist, filming up at his head, I mean, that's a good that's a good angle for this film. You know what I mean? That's fine. That's usable and it works. You know, mm. it's not a dud. I think. Um, I think if they had been improving, this would have been an impossible edit. I think what saved the edit was actually being able to reference a script, knowing the line, knowing where that was, took place within the within that cut, being able to find alt takes of that. You know, I think if it was just like pandemonium, it would have been very tough. So kudos to the to the whole cast and crew for 
you know, they did a great job sticking with that. And the edit was, was a lot more fun. It was less find the thing. And it was a lot more get the vibe down and get the mood. I mean, I mean, Mark and I played for months mm-hmm. on just kind of getting the right tone for some of these sequences, which, you know, you wouldn't think of if it was all just improv, you would just be hoping that you get the the sequence, you know, was there um, was there the challenge of uh, more time required more time in post or in production because yeah of- I mean it did yeah. it did because we were sifting through a lot of footage and angles and just the idea of the you know uh, post in the pandemic was tough you know yeah. just getting you know I, I'd been through a, a couple of editors trying to get through it it's just it was a hard, I think that was 60, 65 hours worth of footage or something like that wow. of different, of different stuff, um, different wow. ways. And th- <laughs> there was a language in it that it's just non-traditional and it's hard. Ha- it's, it's very challenging, even for me, who comes from more of a traditional filmmaking to kind of break the rules and go, no, this can happen or mm-hmm. this can do it. I mean, there's a couple of times me and Carl just discussed, like, it doesn't matter. You can use it or you could do that yeah. or you there there the rules were there are no rules and that's hard to get used to mm-hmm. because you're so trained we're so traditionally trained with storytelling um that it just your your brain snaps back to going first act second act mm-hmm. third act what are the things and those are great goalposts to do as a storyteller we all you know yeah. we love getting to those goalposts emotionally but in the sense of coverage there was points where you go let's for me personally, I was like, look, these kids cut very differently on YouTube. They they super cut, I think is the term super cutting. There's different ways that they cut things. And we've been accepting this language for a long time. Let's try to do some of that in the movie as well to represent the way the YouTubers cut their content. Yeah. You know, you know. And then also a challenge, right? Because of that approach, all the footage is not throwaway. It's like yeah, exactly. Uh, right. You have you have a you know, like a like a smorgasbord of like anything you can do, you know, yeah. anything you can, you can, you could use at a certain yeah. point becomes footage, you know, and comes I think cutaways. What, again, you know? what, what saves, what saves a film trying to do these things is having a very, like, this is what's going to happen in this first act. And this is where yeah. we want to get to emotionally. Mm-hmm. And then in the sec, I mean, it's a very traditional yeah, plot is. arc when you, mm-hmm. when you step back and look at it that way, it's just, when you go in, it's chaos from a from a editing and cutting standpoint. But yeah. the beats and stuff, you know, Mark and I were very, you know, it was very important to us to go. All right, if we're 15 minutes in. We should be getting to something here. We're mm-hmm. a half hour in. We should be feeling this. You know, yeah. always checking ourselves on that because yeah. if I think if you didn't have that and you were just going, we can cut whatever and the the plot can happen whatever and yeah. we'll bring things in and then it gets to almost be too much and i think that's where mark yeah. was saying it gets into too much of an experimental mm-hmm. feeling because it's too many things are different you know you got to yeah. have i think a grounding somewhere and yeah. for us that was that that traditional you know arc yeah. of of a narrative you know that was our yeah, what I, you know what what i i always kind of harkened back to with this particular movie was a roller coaster you know you you're scared you get in you buckle in you're scared, but you're but you're on a track. You know yeah. what I mean? And you're and you're only going to get scared to a certain degree. And I felt like Murmur was like that. You get in, you strap in. You don't know what's around the corner. You don't know. It's kind of a haunted house feel. Um, yeah. But there is a narrative we're following, but you don't know that narrative. But there is a track, you know, yeah. that you're on. So. And and um, you know, being older, if you mm-hmm. will, and, yeah. And, and uh, yeah. addressing the younger kind of approach mm-hmm. to media. You, you, that was your daughter, right? Yeah, but yes, 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 yes. The, the lead girl, yeah. Uh, well, talk yeah. about that, directing. Have you ever directed uh, the younger generation? Yeah, she was, she, uh, yeah, she was, her first thing was she was four and a half when she first did uh, Astronaut Farmer with Billy okay. Bob Thornton. She was the daughter of Billy Bob in a movie okay. that I did. Um, and so that was fun. She, she has a very, and she's on an Apple show now, The Mosquito Coast uh, mm-hmm. with Justin Thoreau and, Oh, cool. An Apple show. And so she'd come and she was, the pandemic obviously affected her show as well. So everybody was shut down at that point. So mm-hmm. I, I kind of was like, she's available. We'd written this a few years ago. Um, and so, yeah, it, it, it was great to have somebody who knew my nuances and knew my direction inside the kids, like almost have an informant in, in a weird yeah, way yeah. And, and, and understand like, 
because in the van, I'm not in the van, you know, in any of those sequences, there is sections where I am, but for the most part, you could speak to, to Cyrus about this. It was a free, it was a, it was like chaos. They just went off in a van. They had their thing. Logan, I started to see in the footage is almost all the kids are doing this, but her more, more so than most of them is going over. Did we get that scene? You know, it was, it was really funny to watch because they would be like, okay, let's rehearse this again. Let's, they took it upon themselves to really do what mm. was required of them. Cause I saw it all on the dailies when they came back mm. and then they came back and they'd be like, okay, we didn't get that. We got that. We didn't get that. Mm. We don't feel good about that. Is, yeah. Can we do it again? And so it was really, it was a very nice team effort from the yeah. kids. It's well, you, really hard fun. to get ensemble. Yeah. And it's funny, yes. I just thought about this now. I think there's only two adults, if you will, in the movie. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. The mom yeah. who's charming yeah. and, and caring yeah. and, and she's really uh, inspiring. But then the, the police officer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was exactly. hilarious. When I was, you know, just when I was assembling them and along with Danny, I really wanted that old 80s Goonies feel where the mm. kids mattered, you know, or Stand By Me where the kids mm -hmm. mattered. And and Cyrus represented that. I always said, I always told him, like, I, I love because he's like the Corey Feldman. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Of it all, I which it. was, it, it, I wanted that that kind of, they, they hearkened back to more of the Breakfast Club version. Like they kept saying, we're like the Breakfast Club. Uh -huh. I could get that, but I was going more for like, hey, let's go, let's create these characters where you really get to know them before the tragedy uh, a tragedy happens or before something can happen to them, and get and get and understand that these kids that we all have are human, and they're being put in these very precarious positions with this phone. Yeah, so. Cyrus, did you do you know those references? Did you watch those movies? Uh -huh. Of yeah. course, I do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not like yeah. what's and. I mean, <laughs> no, did, did you did you have a were you able to uh, have a kind of a rapport with Mark or other adults yeah. on the yes. set? We still we we still have a um yeah Mark and I are are yeah. still friends and uh, we we <laughs> that's good time about because uh, I'm an aspiring writer and director and so um yeah he gives me advice and I and I tell him some of my ideas a lot and. Uh, and yeah, he's just great. And um, yeah, we we have a great rapport. Um, yeah, yeah, awesome. it was great. I mean, the, the thing about Cyrus, that he, he's an old man. <laughs> he <laughs> an old soul. He, he an old soul. And that's a better way of putting it. He <laughs> knows more referencing about movies. He has a laser disc collection of all the movies that I've referenced. So he knew when I was saying, "Hey, <laughs> this is who you are in this picture. This is this," and so he knew all. He he knows more about '80s movies that I grew up in in seventies movies. And so we bonded over, you know, the knowledge yeah. of, and the, and the kind of um, movies that we both watched together. Did, did that help Cyrus that kind of those visual references? It, um, it definitely helped. Um, I do have a laser disc collection just off the side. I do have the <laughs> Goonies actually <laughs> the first edition of the Goonies on laser disc. Wow. Um, super rare. So just a little flex. No, yeah. but uh, Yes, absolutely. It helped. Um, I, it helped in, in the sense that I didn't necessarily need to uh, watch all these movies for like a first time before doing Murmur. So every time Mark would be like referential toward like a vibe he wanted to capture regarding Stand By Me or The Goonies, like immediately I got um what he was what he was inferring to um like like what scenes from stand by me or the goonies or um and so on and so forth so yes it was definitely helpful um from the like aspect of me doing these scenes in the first place them already um being nuanced in my subconscious about like growing up on these kinds of movies right. um so yeah i would say in that in that in that way it definitely helped and a little bit of a transition here, Carl, I don't want to get too nerdy right now and too long on this, but um, in post, um, what did you edit on and like how you know, technical was it because of this approach of multimedia, if you will? Yeah, uh, so it was a premiere based edit. Um, mm -hmm. And technically, I mean, it really wasn't any different than any other you know, edit as you would have it. I mean, I don't know. Mark, I wasn't, I don't know who did the DIT for you guys um, and labeling, but who, uh, we had very robust labeling system for all the takes and all the, mm -hmm. all the media and everything like that. So yeah. it was all very searchable. It was all very easy to go through. I mean, some things we had, you know, some hiccups and 
you know, things don't always line up the way. That or did you, you have to do a lot of like, you know, enhancing, boosting? Uh, mm. because the phone no, didn't no not really. No. We, it was yeah. a deliberate thing to say, you know, keep everything kind of crunchy, keep everything yeah, grainy. Yeah. You know, I mean, a lot of my yeah. renders, I was mm. taking like uh, a lot of the renders and, and like blurring them out and, and removing sharpness and, you know, adding more noise than normal and trying to match the feeling of like how this phone feels sometimes not adding as much noise so that the renders stood out. So it looked like it was a thing placed on top of a, a recording um, from a phone, you know, again, uh, the, the genre of what this whole thing was, this AR game and a phone really, you know, helped inform yeah. the look of all this and, and to say yeah. whether or not, you know, we should enhance this, make it look pretty, yeah. you know, I think in grade, um, it was a very subtle grade, just a light touch yeah. on a lot of the phone footage, just some contrast, just, you know, black levels, things like that. We didn't really want to play with a yeah. look too much in it. We wanted to feel pretty natural. We wanted to feel like somebody took all these phones, ripped the footage off of it, and strung together kind of what you're watching yeah. today, you know? Well, we here loved the whole look of the whole picture, mm -hmm. uh, uh, a fun, a fun visual ride for us. It was, yeah. And, mm -hmm. it, yeah. And the, the, the police officer, the ranger at the beginning, he says, we're going to collect all the data from the footage and, and find out, you know, who did it. Yeah. Yeah. Want, right? yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's a wonderful uh, visual film. Um, we got time for one more question. Sure. Um, Carl, I'll start with you. Uh, what's a takeaway? What's uh, something you learned or, you know, a good memory? Oh, man. I mean, this whole thing was awesome. Uh, technically, this is my, like, the first full feature I've worked on start to finish kind of thing. Oh, it's so, a doozy. Yeah, wow. yeah it's a, it was a doozy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so well um, parts here and there, you know, and like a normal VFX artist, but this is the first time that it was kind of like all the way through. So I think the experience working with Mark was fantastic. I mean, as far as a director is concerned, um, he's amazing to work with, uh, open to hearing suggestions and having a dialogue and a back and forth. I mean, that's what you want in a creative partner. So that was great. I think, um, yeah, I, I, I just, I thought the movie was, was fantastic from the moment I saw it. So being, giving a chance to, you know, work on it and, and have kind of a, a part in it. I think that's the best part. So, yeah, right on. Hey, Danny, are you still there? I forgot you're here. Yeah. You want to add something right. short and sweet just because we can't see you. So I don't want you yeah. to spend too much time. Yeah, I'm, uh, for me, for me, this film was very liberating. Uh, I'm on the opposite of the spectrum from Carl. I've done 14 features and, you know, 300 episodes of television. And that traditional filmmaking, even in an interesting with interesting stories, could get very monotonous. Uh, time and again, because you you know you get a new script, you do the process, and you make a new thing, and you, and this was um, it was very liberating because we broke the rules, right? But then we also were traditional at the same time, so it was just a, a completely different type of filmmaking, and and it was just it was just fun to 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 be there every day. Right on, uh, Cyrus. How about you? What's a takeaway? What's a memory? An anecdote? Oh, man. Um... You know, it's super interesting because, look, um, we did Murmur in August to early September of 2020. So for many months, I was kind of bundled up and very <laughs> anxious and and battling, you know, a lot of anxiety and uh, like, like a lot of my peers uh, during that time. So um, like a great movie... Um, the entire murmur experience was the pinnacle of escapism for me to just go outside away from the 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 pit of anxiety that I was in um, and really being out of my comfort zone that I've kind of developed and getting out of these bad COVID habitual um, things and uh, working with all these awesome people uh, out in the woods and being uh, and being and learning more about what it's like to be a correct team player that was uh one of the best aspects and getting to know mark and um the rest of the cast was a great so overall um it was one of the most uh fun experiences i've ever had as an actor or a creative i look back on it extremely fondly and um and i'd love to do something like that again very soon nice well said Mark, Thank last you, but not least, Thank, uh, what's uh, a takeaway? What do you want to share with us? Um, I, I think the takeaway is, look, you know, I've always, you know, liked painting with new 
paintbrushes. I've always liked innovation. And I think the phone and AR is something that was very intriguing to, to work with. I think the movie's a little bit ahead of its time, um, uh, maybe a couple months with Apple coming out with its glasses and AR yeah. or mixed reality is kind of what they're calling it now. It's that uh, they're getting away from the AR version of it. Uh -huh. um, and so I love the playground that, that we, we set up, the creators here and the creatives. I loved working with the kids. I mean, it was really fun to work with, with, with young, a uh, young cast. Um, the takeaway is, you know, you know, it's, it's hard to say because I, you do your work, you put it out there. You don't know if it's communicating what you want it to communicate. You don't know how it's penetrating or what kind of impact it has. And you try not to be results oriented as a filmmaker, you kind of just put your work out there. They're going to tell you if it's great. They're going to tell you if it's shit and you got to do with it. I think the process of this one was so much fun. It was just a great, look, every film has its issues. Every production has its strengths and weaknesses. And there's always going to be a financial constraint on any art film like this. So to get it done, to meet Carl, to work with Danny, who had worked on a previous TV show, to be friends with Cyrus now, all the things that come out of it, I think are a blessing. And I'm very happy to have created this. And I hope there's a lot more with this team. Yeah. You know, I think we yeah. did something really special. So. I think so too. We we do mm -hmm. so here as well at SFND. Um, yeah. And you know, I could talk to you guys for a yeah, lot yeah. longer about phones and AR and filmmaking, but we don't have the time. Uh, but we just want to say uh, thank you for making the movie. We yeah. know what a challenge yeah. is to make movies. Yeah, yeah. So thank you job. so much. I love good San job. Francisco. I it was always my playground growing up. I'm a Valley kid, so. I uh, see. I didn't know, even get into yeah. that too. You kind yeah, of yeah. shot in San Francisco, yeah. straight to San Francisco. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Yeah. And so, I um, mean, it, it was a, uh, it was. It was very special to finally be able to make a movie in a city that I adore. Yeah. I adore well, San Francisco. It, it, you know, Live 105, all the show. Yeah, you're my, probably my age. So I grew up with the going to the Cure, the Smiths, all I that stuff I didn't even get there. into that. I heard the, the yeah. soundtracks, too. I heard the Clash. Yeah, the Cure. yeah the Clash, all that stuff. Uh, kind of my little wink to the to Live 105 era. You know? Yeah, and so. um, uh, see, I want to keep talking, but yeah. uh, the forest is in it a lot. I mean, yes, I yes, yes, yes. Big time. Yes. The, the cure. Big, big. The cure. It, it, it had a lot of the dialogue. The, the lyrics kind of pertain to what we were doing. I mean, I think, you know, that style of music, that kind of goth era stuff. I thought it was a perfect a blend. Yeah. I mean, they yes. really married I well together. Yeah, I love uh, I, Look, that that track could be so deconstructed like we did. And you could play the bass line. You could play anything mm -hmm. through Robert Smith's is a genius in my book. So. To be able to to use his music in this film was uh, was just magical, you know. Yeah. And to be able, I don't think that music gets old. I think it just gets better. It worked yeah. perfectly yeah. the way you used it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, uh, it's thank a wonderful you. film. People have to see it for themselves if yeah. they haven't already. Uh, yeah. Congrats again, and thank you for thank you so much. Our festival. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it. Thank you.